Hello everyone and Merry Christmas to you. We have amazing opportunity to do another Leap Micro video. So last week we had Leap Micro 6 one officially released. That also means that the Leap Micro 5.5 is end of life or it will be by the end of the year. Um, so the most notable changes on 6.1 uh, when it comes to Leap Micro, right? Which is rebranded Slim Micro. We have uh, open source and migration tool which can help you to upgrade from previous release, uh, releases as well as you, if you would like to, it can actually help you to migrate to something like MicroOS. Uh, if you would like to switch from Leap Micro to rolling release. Um, another thing is um, that you will notice for sure is the rework juice first boot. Uh, it's a little bit more complex this time, it has more options, which also adds some complexity, but we will have a look at that. We have two-factor authentication, uh, which can be actually quite nice for cockpit, I think. Uh, and there are a bunch of new packages for sub-virtualization, and I believe if you go to uh, yeah, Leap Micro, I think in the alpha I get the full, full, yeah, we have soft reboot support, right, which is also nice, so if you want to reduce downtime, uh, which is really cool, especially on, on the immutable system, you upgrade on background into new snapshot, right, uh, you don't have to go through post, you, you, you go down with all the services, then you start it up again with new, new partitions, and uh, that actually makes that upgrade much, much faster. Uh, another thing that is not actually happening on Leap Micro, but on uh, SUSE Linux Enterprise Micro, is that they've added support for PPC64 LE. If there would be any demand on Leap Micro, I really need to know use case. Feel free to share it with me on codeopensuse.org. We have something called Leap Features. You can use it for Leap Micro as well. And you open new issue, describe your use case. Hey, we need abs we absolutely need PPC64 LE for whatever reason. We want to know. Otherwise, we only plan to support ARM and Intel. Okay. Cool, uh, so let's actually have a look at the reworked first boot. Uh, we will actually, we will use not the traditional self-install image, uh, but rather a fully encrypted disk image, just to make it a little bit more spicier. So I already have running VM, but I would like to show you how to properly set up um, a new VM, okay? Because for TPM, for encrypted image, you need TPM 2.0 chip which we can emulate in Invert Manager, and you will also need uh, to use UFI. So yeah, we will be importing disk image. Again, you you would download this one. Please make sure it may be, uh, it is actually compressed with XZ. Please make sure to uncomp uncompress the image. You can use XZ-D and the image name, and in one minute you are done. There we go. So we have emulated uh, TPM 2.0 chip and we are using UFI, okay? You can actually do that, uh, you can, if you click new install, a new VM, we import the disk image, right? Keep in mind that we need to uncompress the raw image, but then it will be, yeah, this one, maybe micro 6 one, yeah, there we go. Yeah. We will not put the actual VM. Just be aware that uh, Leap Micro is rebranded Slim Micro. The feature set is uh, almost exactly the same. We have additional open source branding and maybe the open source migration tool on our site, but that's that's it. Kernel and everything else is the same. Okay, so we, yeah. Leap Micro 62 encrypted, for example, so it doesn't clash with the existing VM. Uh, this is absolutely a must have. You need to check this. Uh, to save yourself a lot of pain, because you cannot easily change, well, you would have to edit the XML uh, for the BIOS later. But here, so we go for UFI, and here you add TPM 2.0 chip, right? And you use 2.0, finish, done. I will not do that because we already have such VM set up, and uh, you know, in order to save some image, I will cancel the installation. And let's let's go back to this image. So here we booted. Just be aware that there may be a little delay on the uh, on the screen before you move to the grab in the VM. This is okay. Uh, it's happening on my side too. Uh, so here we go with the updated first boot wizard. Yeah, US. Okay, license agreement. Let's go for UTC. Uh, I'll go with simple password. I have an option to enter a passphrase or just use uh, TPM. I will, let's, let's see both. Yep. So we will actually, so new, I will make it very complex. My favorite password. So 
So we have re encrypted the root file system, it's nice. I will skip this step. Let's create user. So I will create my my this one. Uh, here actually we have quite different rules and you may be surprised so if you also create VMs for testing purposes like I'm using usually password test, right? Uh, here you will not be allowed because uh, with root account you cannot by default SSH so we don't really have restrictions on the password, we leave it on the user. Um, nor you can log into cockpit unless you actually configure it otherwise. So, uh, while this user, user will be privileged and this one can SSH and can actually use cockpit. So here the permissions are quite restricted. Okay. This is very nice. Uh, so this gives you a QR code. Cool. So now I actually have in my phone new OTP for, for the VM. I will set the OTP value. Uh, I was using Google Authenticator. So you can use whatever application you want. Seems about right. Cool. And we are done. So let's enable cockpit. So here we are on console. I can log in as root, uh, unlike with SSH or cockpit. So we will enable cockpit. Okay, right. Mm -hmm. let's, uh, let's get the IP. And uh, Cool, we can access cockpit, which is nice. There we go. So I will use my account. We use uh, the OTP that we have. Oh. Wrong password, I suppose. There you go, limited access. Let's make sure. And here we are, admins. So I hope that you liked it. Uh, you may ask who would actually use the encrypted image. So if you are into trusted computing, uh, you want to make sure that your, your disk can be only, only actually mounted on your machine and you are worried that somebody may actually manipulate with the disks, this is a great option with the TPM 2.0 chip. Uh, finally, if you want more information about uh, full encryption with TPM, you may go to Susacom website and look up this article. So thank you very much. I really hope that you liked it. Uh, you may also want to test the OpenSUSE migration tool since we are, uh, especially if you are migrating from 6.0, Okay, we are on micro, so we have to run it in transaction update shell. So here we are at lead micro 6.1, so we do not really have an upgrade option to a new release. 6.1 is the latest one. If you would be on lead micro 6.0 and you would run this tool, you would actually see lead micro 6.1 as, as a target for the migration or upgrade if you would. You, you would choose it, uh, it would basically fetch open to the repo sleep micro from the 6.1 repository, right? Uh, that's that's kind of nice benefit that you no longer have to tinker uh, with repositories whether something was added or removed in between releases, especially in between like major releases like 5.5 to 6, we actually were dropping some repositories. Um, so at least this part is done for you. And then it basically runs zippered up, right? So we are in an immutable system. So we run everything in transactional update shell. Something goes wrong, your system, you still have like working copy of your system, right? Uh, that you can always return to, which is nice. Uh, on, yeah, on leap, uh, if you would migrate from leap to, I don't know, 15, 6 to 16, you would have to use snapper uh, for potential rollback. Again, in the boot, you would see the previous snapshots, which is also nice. You can restore the system if something goes wrong, uh, yeah. Um, I would not advise to use it on, on uh, non-BTRFS systems because yeah, then the rollback is a little bit uh, trickier. And that's basically it. Thank you very much and have a happy Christmas. Bye.